In January, the British government gave the go-ahead for new experimental research, injecting stem cells directly into the hearts of coronary patients. Now, although doctors have high hopes, they also caution that at the moment it's untested, unproven and potentially risky. That doesn't seem to worry some doctors here in Asia. In China and Thailand, the same treatment is already freely available for a high fee to people desperate enough not to care about the risk. On this edition of 101 East, we ask, are Asia's hospitals offering hope to the hopeless, or are they using human guinea pigs to test unproven treatments? Medical tourism in Asia is booming, attracting an estimated 1.6 million people every year. Patients come from all over the world, mostly for routine treatments that are much cheaper in China, India, Singapore and Thailand. But increasingly, Asia is also becoming the destination for the desperate. Fazia Ibrahim went to Thailand to speak to one man for whom untested stem cell therapy was the final and only option. It's a long way from Bloomington, Illinois to Bangkok, Thailand. But 66-year-old Jerry Ross has made the trip in search of a miracle. Jerry's been living with a chronic heart problem for the last three years. But on one of his frequent trips to Asia, he receives a dire warning. I went to a cardiologist in the Philippines, and he said it was very bad, more than what I had thought. And um, he gave me two years to live. Jerry chose to forego a heart transplant, preferring to try stem cell therapy. Treatment in the U.S. is not an option as it is still being trialed there. But Jerry found several hospitals in Bangkok offering stem cell treatment. <clears throat> From what they were saying about their 80% success rate, I think I might end up the poster child for this. If it don't work, I spent a lot of money for nothing. <laughs> this is about a $50,000 trip. I'm very hopeful, I'm scared, nervous, but I'm very hopeful that it'll be okay, that it'll work out and, um, you know, I hope it works out. While chronic heart sufferers like Jerry see stem cell therapy as providing a new lease on life, others are concerned that the procedure is still in its experimental stage. Some doctors are worried that the line between research and medical treatment is fast becoming blurred, particularly with the boom in medical tourism. Many experts are now calling for stricter regulations to protect the patients. Stem cell therapy has been quite successful in Thailand, especially in treating leukemia and thalassemia. But these successes have been used to promote treatment for more than 70 kinds of diseases. It's been offered to patients suffering heart conditions or cancer. But such treatments are still being researched, so this is very worrying for consumers. We need the regulation from the public health ministry because uh, right now each hospital has their own standard and no one governed that. No one governed that. And so it did, will be depend on the, the morale or ethic of each hospital right now. Thailand's government has set up a committee to look at regulating stem cell therapy. The procedure is often touted as the last option for chronic heart sufferers. Some patients are coming in, uh, they desperately need some form of treatment. They, they have been turned down everywhere and they're not suitable for any other form of treatment. They're willing to have the stem cell done as a last hope. So sometimes uh, we have to do it, uh, you know, the four Thai hospitals offering the procedure are ethically obliged to inform their patients it is still in the experimental stage. But critics say such warnings are easily overlooked when the treatment promises to extend life and improve general health. If they are last resource patients, in ethical sense, they are considered as the vulnerable population that needs more careful protection. We are testing the products that you don't know whether it works or not. That's the keywords. Is it fair for them to pay for the products that you are not sure yet uh, whether it works or not? A week after his surgery, Jerry was in pain and dissatisfied with the post-operative care. 
He complained about not receiving any painkillers or medication when he was discharged. Well, joining me now in our studio are Professor Lee Silver from Princeton University in the United States and Dr. Tain Tut, who's the medical director at TerraVitae, the Thai-based company that we referred to in that report. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. So, pleasure. Professor pleasure. Silver, let, let me begin with you, if I could. In the United mm -hmm. States, um, drug testing, procedure testing is a very painstaking business. Uh, there's a, a great deal of regulation surrounding all of that. Are you surprised to find that in places like Thailand, therapies like this are being given um, freely? Well, no, I'm not, I'm not surprised. I mean, the United States has a very, very strict FDA that makes sure uh, therapies go through a whole se uh, series of levels of clinical trials before anything can be put out in, in the marketplace. Um, some people think that it's too strict. Other people think that it's not strict enough. Um, so but in th Thailand, there is virtually no regulation on issues like this. Is that maybe too far the other way? I think that it's critical to tell a patient exactly what the uh, risks and benefits are, to be able to inform the patient specifically uh, that something is risky, that something is, is um, um, experimental, it may or may not work. But and you think informing the patient is enough uh, of, a, of a balance as long as, the, as long as the patient under, understands completely what the treatment entails and, and how likely it is to work. And we're talking about patients who are at the end of life where there are no other um, uh, resorts. As long as they understand that this treatment might not work, if that's mm. the case, um, in my mind, and not every American agrees with me, okay. uh, it should be up to the patient. What are the regulations in Thailand, if any, regarding your particular line of business? At this moment, uh, we have no jurisdiction under the FDA law, but with the Medical Ministry of Health and the Medical Council, they are looking into some regulations. They are you know, watching the stem cells treatment in all the hospitals that we are treating. We are treating in four hospitals. So, but in the very near future, there might be some regulation and, you know, coming to what type of, uh, you know, uh, the ethical issue. The, the, your, your treatment uh, claims, uh, as was suggested by the patient that we saw in that film there, that there's a 75 to 80 percent uh, success rate. Right. Is that true? And have you got figures to back that up? Yes, uh, we have treated, uh, I would say, about we have, before we treat, you know, experimental for patients that we are treating now, we have to go through the cl clinical trials. We did the clinical trials for 24 patients for angina for how long? Uh It took us about nearly two years to complete the 24 uh, uh, patients, and it was completed last, it was uh, in 2006, November, and it was uh, already presented at the American Heart Association in November in Chicago. Can you um, sell a practice as 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 feasible if it's had tw two years of testing with 24 people. I mean, would that pass muster in a medical journal in a peer-reviewed situation? Um, as far as I know, there's only been one publication on this that's come out in in a medical journal. Um, I think it's a different level of analysis than molecular biologists will do. Um, I'm not I'm not uh, qualified to say whether this wh whether the treatment is uh, validated after two mm. two years or not. I mean, clearly it's experimental. It has not been approved in Europe or the United States. We we uh, have spoken subsequently to Jerry, the, the the patient that we saw there, and he has complained subsequently that the backup service he's been getting and the amount of pain he's been suffering has not really been treated. Uh, surely these are also part of the considerations that should be involved in all of this. The service that you offer. Yes, uh, that is correct also. And another thing is the stem cells that we are using is not from the bone marrow. It's from the peripheral blood. It's mm -hmm. very, very safe. It's, it, it's because it's like, a, you know, it's... Uh, Maybe safe, from, but is it effective is the question. Because we have proven we have treated over about 250 patients, and that's what we are saying at uh, 75 to 80 percent success rate but means... But again, I mean, can... can uh, with respect, can you say it's been proven when there's been no peer review, when there's been such a short spell uh, and such a small sample of patients? So uh, at this point, it's, uh, I would say that uh, we are treating uh, no option patients to prove that it's uh, really helped. It is, uh, we have to come up, we, that's why we are still following up. It's still, we, every time I always say that we are, we are even still in the learning stage mm. because it's a short period. We have treated patients. The first ever treated patient was a, 
uh, about two and a, two and a, two years, just a little bit after two years. But to follow up, is we still need up up to about three okay. four years so that we can prove that means the stem cells work. Well, just but, just just a quick question to you. I, I guess doctors like you in the United States and in, in Western Europe, to a certain extent, must be casting a fairly covetous eye over here because at least <laughs> you're learning something, albeit slowly and and perhaps not up to the standards you want. Uh, at least they're making progress here. Is that a problem for you? No, I think this. I mean, this is a shot in the dark in a, in a certain sense. You're you're putting the stem cells in, hoping that you get and uh, helping you, you're able to help some people. Uh, a lot a lot more basic research has to be done to understand what genes are turning on and off mm. to take a stem cell and turn it into a blood vessel, which is what okay. you're trying to do. All right. Well, it is a shot in the dark, as you say, and, and there are any number of ethical issues that we've touched on. Let's take a break and we'll try and consider some of those when we come back. We will take a couple of minutes off, but when we come back, we'll also bring you the story of one stem cell patient from Singapore who, after the treatment, says she is looking forward to a longer life. Stay with us.